So Azim, um, I just want to ask you about, uh, this is your first time at the BT Young Scientists in Ireland. What's your overall impression? What, what kind of things have wowed you? Well, it's got me in a really, really great mood. I'm feeling incredibly optimistic about the world. I've been walking some of the, the stands and I've seen uh, kids solve problems uh, in really, really novel ways. And one really uh, stood out to me um, was a girl who was using uh, machine learning to detect cancers. And she had a problem with her data set. There wasn't enough data, so she generated synthetic data using a technique called the Generative Adversarial Network. These were only introduced in the world in research in late 2014. They started to make their way commercially in 2017, maybe last year, 2018. And here we have a school child using this technology to solve a real problem that has been a very kind of present issue uh, in Ireland recently. And, and, and I'm seeing that repeated time and again as I walk through those stands. It's quite something. I'm in a really great mood. Now, uh, you, you uh, publish a very well-regarded newsletter yeah. on technology. Um, you advise the CTO of Accenture on artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, while not quite a divisive issue of our times, could be if, if all the fears that are being suggested do come true. Should we really fear AI or is it something that's really going to, going to help our lives? Well, I, I think we have to be optimistic in general about the life, uh, life, but we have to be conditionally optimistic. Things can, can go wrong and things can get missold. And AI is, is a very powerful technology, maybe the most powerful of our time. And like many other technologies, it can be misunderstood, miscommunicated and enforced on top of people. And that makes people feel unhappy and uncomfortable. And I think one of the things we have to do is have much wider public engagement uh, with these technologies. And the technologists need to do a much, much better job in getting across out to the public to try to understand what we want from them. And something I've been saying for the last couple of years is that technology is too important to be left to technologists. And in terms of, I suppose, the, the breakthroughs that are happening, uh, when you say technology too important to be just left to the technologists, but in terms of how it'll impact our lives, and you know, one of the big fears is economic. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think? Do you think? Uh, you know, some theories being floated around is that there's a need for a universal social wage, or mm -hmm. you know, different things like that. But at the same time, um, we've never had more people in the world who have been better educated with more technology to their right. hands. Wikipedia, for example, is the world's biggest encyclopedia, and it's free. I mean, I think that's usually empowering. What are, your, what are your thoughts on the future uh, in regards to the socio-economic impact of technology? The rules that we live by are changing. And they're changing because we now get things for free that we used to pay for. Wikipedia is a good example. And that shows up as a decline in GDP. Well, that's insane because actually we've got a new free resource. And, and so the, the hardest questions are not, are we going to get this widget to be able to do this thing? The questions are, what kind of society do we want to uh, live in? What values? do we think are important and how are we going to implement policies to uh, encourage those values and make sure that they are reflected in, the, in our society. And, and those are the questions and those are not questions that can be left to machine learning experts or biochemists. They're the, the domain of politics and the domain of all of us to get involved and have these conversations. One of the things that made, I, I was re reminiscing on 2018 and I just couldn't believe just how many security scandals there were mm -hmm. really and Facebook struck me, for example, as a company that's kind of out of control in some yeah. ways. Um, when we look at the, the empowerment of technology, the vast technology people have in their hands, the amount of threats, and of course the geopolitical issues, the, the instability of world leaders, I mean, what are your thoughts on security in, in the next few years? Well, security and cybersecurity is uh, going to be a, a growing problem. So what, what, what's happening? What's happening is that it's becoming much cheaper to launch attacks. Uh, it is becoming, a, uh, the attack surface is getting much bigger. There are many different ways of getting into organizations. Uh, you're getting state actors using parastatal or private sector organizations to mount attacks on their behalf. And part of the challenge is the way that you defend from a cyber attack is not the way you used to defend from a physical attack. A physical attack, you would build a wall, you would build a castle, you put the castle on a hill, and you don't get let people get, 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 get to you with cyber attacks, you actually have to follow the trace of the attack in order to defend. So defense is attack. That creates an, uh, opportunities for escalation that are difficult to manage. And I think what we've started to see is that, uh, that, that manifest itself in the fact that large scale states have to rely on technology companies to track down uh, 
viruses or malware or bot attacks or computational propaganda. They don't have the capabilities within their own militaries to do that. So what I see is much more of it a very, very complex uh, environment where over the next four or five years, we will work out the rules of the game. We will work out what reasonable responses need to, to look like. But in the meantime, the bad actors will take advantage uh, of every inch they're given. I just want to ask you um, about your thoughts on the, um, the issue of gender in technology. Mm -hmm. uh, the last few years we've seen Silicon Valley pockmarked by scandals. Yes. If you look down there, more than 60% of the entrants are, are girls. But something happens along the way in technology where uh, fewer women rise to the top, life happens, a lot of things happen. Mm. What, are you, what are your thoughts on how we can actually balance this out and, and you know, see technology, provide more role models, uh, see more girls you know, rise to the top in technology, not just be seen as a stereotypical male pursuit? Yeah, I mean, it is a really, really huge problem and it's, it's, it's significant for so many reasons. Um, you know, the fairness of it, the fact that it gets reflected in the products and the services that we that we are used or forced to use, many of which are bought by women or used by women. And because the domestic realm is still something that in many societies women manage, they're forced to use technologies that are designed in a very gendered way that's not suitable for them. So I'm optimistic because 60% of the uh, participants here are, are girls and we hope that they will be afforded the opportunity to continue to move forward uh, in this career as they as they progress. Uh, but, but I also think that we shouldn't try to be satisfied with half measures and slow progress on an issue that is as significant as this. And we really need to be a little bit more radical, um, aggressive and call it out when we see poor behavior and force companies and organizations to make the changes more quickly, but perhaps by our consumer pressure. And the final question is, what is your big prediction for 2019 and 2020 going onwards in terms of what technologies might make change the game? Well, I, I think one thing is that we're going to be in the midst of the tech lash, the technology backlash. Uh, and so people will be much more circumspect and phlegmatic about just grabbing the latest widget or the latest gadget. Um, but, but in terms of where we are in, in the development of AI in particular, it's getting into its uh, mature phase where we will start to see businesses and, uh, and also consumers really benefit from improved customer service or better pricing or improved diagnostics because these sorts of things have been put in the pipeline in 2016, 2017 and they're now going to go online 2019, 2020. Azim, thank you very much.